This program is brought to you by the following sponsors. I couldn't make it to the couch, so I'm sitting on the floor. Screw it. So anyway, what's going on guys? Jay Shy here with another video and I know it's been like it's been a couple of weeks since I made a video mostly because of the fact that I told you guys my videos are gonna slow down because I'm working on a couple of projects. One of those projects is almost done. I only got three more things to do and that project will be finished. But I don't wanna talk about that. What I wanna talk about is kinda like, uh, so what I started doing last year um, when it came to like video games and stuff like that because I started looking back to the past for most of my games because I wasn't really, um, I wasn't all in with the weird shady business practices of AAA gaming uh, right now. So uh, this video is basically what it says down below. This is my 2018 games I had fun with, new and old. These are games that I just decided to either, uh, I've never played before, games I looked into, or games that I remember as a kid that I actually went out and searched for and just decided to play it. Or games that I had for a long time and never played them. Um, that's basically what I'm doing now, is I'm playing a lot of my old stuff. So, a l maybe uh, people might be upset with this list, only because there's not a lot of new things on it. Sort of, I would say. Um, there's not a, I, I will say this, the, the, the big three that came out of 2018, only one of them are on my list, only because I didn't buy the other two, and I wasn't really interested in it. But, uh, uh, we'll get to that story when we get to that game. Uh, but I got 10 games that I, I pretty much played last year that I either finished or I'm in the process of playing now because I've basically started to focus on my backlog now. Um, I noticed that I have, like, tons of games that I didn't even finish and I keep buying more so I've kind of decided to stop purchasing uh, I would say buying in bulk and then putting it on a shelf and I'll get to it when I get to it now I've started playing more which is one of the reasons why I haven't been able to make a lot of videos because I'm working on projects but at the same time I'm playing more of my games and I'm finishing them and a lot of a lot of the games on my list are games that I finished so we could start like I said this video is new and old games so you're gonna see games that came out two years ago you're gonna see games that came out in 1995 you're gonna see games that came out last year you're gonna see that stuff so let's get started so these games are games that I'm playing on my backlog right now I'm finishing up I'm trying to clean up my backlog is what I'm doing and then I'll start buying new games again but uh, I got I made a list so the first game on my list is uh, game, the game that I Number 10, I probably should have been higher, but I put it at number 10 because I felt like I, I, I should start off with a PS4 game, and it's Momodora. Uh, Momodora is the first game on my list. I had a lot of fun with this game. Um, it's like a Metroidvania-styled uh, kind of action platformer. It's interesting, except it doesn't have the RPG mechanic um, that a lot of Metroidvania or, you know, Metroid or Castlevania style side scrollers with RPG mechanics where you level up. It doesn't have that. It just has the exploration part of the game, which is fine. I, I did have a lot of fun with the game. The game has like this ominous kind of um, music to it, which fits the game perfectly. Uh, if you've never played this game, I would definitely give it a chance. It's it's actually pretty good. And now that there's a sequel coming out, I think on the Switch, which sucks because I still don't have one, um, I, I definitely recommend Momodora. Uh, I had tons of fun with it. I beat it, I think, November is when I finished it, or like early December, I would probably say. So it's it's not hard. So I it's it, it doesn't really have like a challenge to it. It, it's more or less like if you die, it's because uh, you didn't see something coming or um, you made a mistake. <laughs> uh, next game on my list is a game I purchased. I never played it, but I was always interested in playing it. But I purchased it in, I think, October. And it's Gungrave Overdose. Um, Gungrave Overdose is a... It's 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 strange. <laughs> it's, it's not a bad game, but it ain't great either. Um, I... I beat this game recently and I I had frustrating fun with this. Um, this game feels like it was built 
to be played uh like the game feels like it was built to be played like you're supposed to be in outdoorsy areas um most of the time if you ever get a chance to play this game you're probably going to be fighting with the camera most of the time um because the game feels like it was built to be played outside they put you in doors like like tight corridors and stuff like that or or they put you in a place with a ceiling so it's hard to rotate the camera and because it's on the playstation 2 this is before the whole twin stick thing you know when everybody got used to twin sticks so i, I um it feels really finicky uh luckily there's like a lock on but it kind of sucks because you're fighting the camera too so it took some time to beat that game um a lot of points in the game i had to cheese the game so i had to like really cheap the game out like i had to like stand in corners put my back up against the wall and just kind of mash away and hopefully whatever was whatever i wasn't able to look at because the camera kept fighting me uh would die so <laughs> i had to cheese the game in order to finish it so but i did have fun with it even though some of the fun was frustration um but that was uh Gungrave Overdose, if you didn't see. Gungrave, guys. Uh, there's a new one coming out, apparently, so... Um, I guess I got that game right on time. <laughs> uh, next on my list is a game that got terrible reviews when I was a kid. But I had it in my collection for a long time, and I never played it, and I decided to just play it. And I had a lot of fun with it, I have to say. And it's Akuji the Heartless. Um, I finished this game... <sighs> I think I finished this one right at the end of December. Um, Akuji the Heartless kind of plays like a, a, a pseudo... How do I explain it? A uh, Soul Reaver game. If you guys don't know what Soul Reaver is, it's, like, it's a leg Legacy of Kane game. It's a Legacy of Kane Soul Reaver. It kind of plays like that. It, it plays like a, 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 a tech demo version of Legacy of Kane. But um, Akuji was fine. It, it wasn't bad. It was, I, I had a lot of fun with it, actually, because it... Um, Brought me back to that kind of old school exploration platforming kind of thing, but the uh, the combat is, is kind of hard to get around. But it felt like I was playing a 3D version of Pandemonium. If you, uh, I, I would check that game out too. Uh, it's on the PlayStation One. It's called Pandemonium. It's actually pretty cool, um, but it doesn't restrict you like Pandemonium does. Pandemonium is like a 2D. Uh, it's it's a, it's a 2D game, but it kind of tricks you that it's 3D, but it's 2D. Um, but this game kind of gives me that kind of vibe. It has like this voodoo dark vibe. It's, it's pretty cool. I, I would definitely recommend it. One of the things that kind of weirded me out is that it has a T rating. But this game has a lot of dark imagery and a lot of blood and gore. So I, I, I don't know how this game got a T rating, which is very strange. Next is another PS1 title that I thought I beat when I was a kid. But as I got farther in the game, it became quite apparent that I did not beat this game when I was a kid. Um, and it's Ape Escape. Uh, I played this in November, and I actually beat this game. And that final level is, 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 is. Uh, it, it, how do I say this? Playing this game really brought into perspective how easy today's games are. Uh, <laughs> this game was actually kind of hard towards the end. Um, I had a difficult time with the last parts of the game. Uh, because it has a lot of 3D platforming and l l not a lot of place for error. So, um, I did have fun with this. I did beat it. This has been checked off my backlog area as well. Um, but I did have fun with this game a lot. Uh, there, there are some points in the game where the game will tell you, hey, you can go back and 100% complete this. I'm, I'm not doing that <laughs> because I, I just... I, I just beating the game was enough for me. I don't want to hundred percent it. So it was just it, it's just too difficult <laughs> uh, Next is a game that I don't have but I did play it and I have to explain this part is Marvel's spider-man That's one of the big three that I was talking about the other two are God of War and Red Dead Redemption uh, I'm just not interested in Red Dead because I don't really I'm not a guy who's into Westerns um, I've just never been that guy. Uh, and the thing with God of War is I'm kind of... God of War looks cool, but I wasn't interested in playing that either. Um, and I'll explain why. Um, so when I got Marvel Spider-Man, I did enjoy it. Uh, I was playing it and I was like, wow, this game reminds me of an Arkham game. Uh, but it's, it's, it's fine, I guess. Uh, the swinging mechanics is really good. I had fun with that. Um, but I think after three days of having it, 
I found out that there was like four DLCs announced for it and that kind of turned me off. So I ended up, I bought the game and then like a week later I traded it in because I was like, I don't want to have this game if I have this idea that a game of the year edition or a web swinging edition is going to come out that has all the DLC for free. So um, because of those sort of business practices, it kind of turned me off of a lot of newer AAA games that come out now. Now I'm just like in a waiting mode because um, they did the same thing with Resident Evil 7. Like I was really interested in Resident Evil 7 and then I had this feeling, I was like, man, you know, Capcom has this thing where they always come out with a different edition. And I think like a year or two later, like a gold edition came out and I was like, well, that happened. But by then I wasn't really interested in playing the game. Um, I just wasn't. And uh, when it came to like God of War and you know, all those games, I'm just like, I'll, I'll keep my eyes and ears open when the definitive edition comes out. But I am interested in those games. Um, well, God of War I'm more interested in than Red Dead because I don't, the open world um, Western doesn't appeal to me. I'm just not into Westerns. I, I don't know. I've never been into Westerns. Even when I was a kid, I was never into it. But Spider-Man was enjoyable from, for the little bit that I played of it. Uh, I made it all the way up to the part where you control Miles, and I, I found out about the DLC, so I ended up trading it. <laughs> but moving on, uh, next on the list is Fist of the North Star uh, Lost Paradise. I, I, I thought it was Paradise Lost, but it's Lost Paradise. Um, this game is fantastic. Uh, I didn't finish it yet, but... This game is highly recommended. I recommend this game. I like weird stuff. You guys already know this. I, I buy weird games. That's my thing. Um, but I do have a lot of fun with this. There is a, uh, a thing that I didn't know about this game. And like, um, I knew it was made by the Yakuza guys, but I didn't know, I wasn't aware of how big the world was going to become until like I, I, I got to that part of the game and I was like, all right, so I already know that this game is going to take me some time. So I haven't beaten it yet, but I'm still playing it. It's on my backloggery now, um, which I'll, I'll link in the description below. You guys can check out my backloggery and see what I'm catching up on and what I'm playing. But let's move on. Next is one of my personal favorites. Got to have a shmup on here, and it's PS4. This is Ketsui, Jiko Ketsui Kizuna Jikoku Tachi uh, Death Tiny. This is, um, I had to import this because it's... Japanese only. Uh, this is a shmup, uh, a port, an uh, arcade port of a cave shmup that came out in, when did this come out? 1999? 98? Probably. <laughs> um, but this is a bullet hell shooter. Um, I've been playing this. I finished the death tiny mode, which uh, I don't understand the scoring mechanic of the game, but I know I enjoy it quite a bit. You guys can look it up in a video, um, but it it's, it's an interesting mode where you, you, instead of like, before you would have bombs, but the mode gives you like this kind of bar where you turn bullets into like chips. And it's it's, it's a really interesting mode. I, I beat that mode and then I beat the regular arcade mode and I'm not even gonna try and 1cc that game. Like not even gonna try because that game is, is legendary hard. So, <laughs> but let's just move on. And now I think I'm at my top three. So. My top three games that I've had, I've been having fun with, or I'm, I, I've had fun with. Number three on my list is Vampire. Uh, this game, I watched a kind of like a commentary trailer on this game before it came out. Uh, uh, I think it was like a year before it came out, and I was already intrigued by it. Uh, but when I got the game and I started playing it, I didn't think that this game was gonna reel me in the way it does. Uh, this game is, I, I don't wanna say it's fantastic because it has its issues, but this game is <laughs> surprisingly well done. <laughs> I would say that. This game is great. Um, this game I spent $60 for and I never regretted it at all. I've had so much fun with this game. And the fact that um, you have to make very smart and critical decisions on how you want to kill off certain characters, 
uh, really puts my back up against the wall because I stopped playing it for a while because I was like, man, I'm so low leveled right now for this next area that I have to be in uh, that I'm going to have to kill off a character that I love. And, and the, the, the game does a very good job of making you fall in love with characters. Uh, and the fact that in order for you to like get more experience is to like kill off those characters that you fall in love with. Oh man, I stopped playing it for a while, but then I started again and I was like, God, this game is good. It's, it's really good. I can't, I, I recommend this game. This is coming from me. I recommend this game because I, I like, I like games like that. I like games that are weird and does something different that push the envelope. Second game on my list is a game I've never beaten and I finally beat on, it wasn't, I didn't beat it on Christmas. I think I beat it four days before Christmas, like a week before Christmas, and it is Parasite Eve. Uh, I finally beat this game. <laughs> I started to do the Chrysler Tower, which is the 74, 74 floor dungeon to get the true ending. I started doing that and I made it like to like the ninth floor and then I, I gave up. I was like, this, this thing is... You, you need to invest some time in that Chrysler building. But this game is so much better than I remember. I I thought that, like, this game was just, you know, it, it's, it, was, it was fun for when I played it. But then when I started, when I went back to it and I started playing it again, I was like, wow, this game is so much fun. I noticed that I was waking up in the morning just to play Parasite Eve again. If you ever get a chance, if you've never played Parasite Eve and you want to play Parasite Eve, Beware of those uh, those final two bosses. They will beat the crap out of you, like royally. Um, especially if I got a healthy tip from a friend because I was talking to a friend about it. Because um, I didn't want to look look up things online. Like I, whenever I'm playing an old school game that I know a friend has beaten, I always talk to my friends about it. I never go online. So I was talking to a friend. I was like, dude, like, should I do anything? Do you have any tips? He was like, bro, like, when you get to the museum. Before you finish the museum, make sure you level up all your weapons and gear. It's about to get real. Luckily, he gave me that advice, and I was I was sort of prepared for what was to come. And uh, I just gave you guys that advice. But this game is so good. Parasite Eve is well recommended. I, I had tons of fun with it. Like, <laughs> I beat that game, and I was like, let me do this Chrysler Tower, and now I can't do it. <laughs> but I'm probably going to, like mess around with it here and there and number one on my list i finally did all three endings or is it four yeah i did I finally did the four endings of this game i went back to it and i started playing it and it is number one on my list because you guys already know i've talked about this game and you guys know it's my number one for like two years straight or something and it's near automata uh do i really need to talk about this game like I, I love this game. This game has everything that I love in a video game. It has great storytelling, it's a shmup, and it's 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 like a, a, a platinum game action hack and slash RPG hybrid. It has everything that I want. And not gonna lie, the game's story is what really reels me in. Like when I talk about this game with friends, um, especially with my buddy James, when we talk about it, we're passionate about it because the game tells a very good story about um, yeah. about like machines becoming you know they're becoming more intelligence they're evolving as a race instead of just machines and it's it's so good and it's like i i hope that this game did well because i would love another one of these you know i would love to see where square and platinum go you know in the future um hopefully it happens before the ps5 because um uh, with the way things are going now, I, I'm doing a segue. <laughs> this is a segue into another topic, uh, and I don't want this video to go on too long, but uh, the way things are going now, I think that PS4 is probably going to be my final console generation. I'm probably going to get a Nintendo Switch when uh, more games that I want come out, but I think PS4 is my last one. Uh, with the way that video games are going, uh, most likely they're probably all going to be digital and I deal in physical media. Uh, that's one thing, but I don't like the business practices of the bigger companies. Uh, like I said before, it's, it's sort of like a turnoff for me. 
uh, mostly because I I grew up in an era, I, and I know a lot of uh, people are not gonna understand. Uh, I know that you know you a lot of you who probably watch my videos have grown up in the day and age of you know DLC is fine, you know uh, loot boxes are great. Uh, I grew up in an age where we got all that stuff for free, so it's it's different for me as it is for you. Uh, so because it's a turn off for me, it's only because whenever I bought a game for like fifty to sixty dollars, the whole game was there. It was it was all there. Whenever they needed to delay a game, they would delay it and add that stuff on there. And when you paid your sixty bucks, you got everything you wanted. Um, that's one of the main reasons why I think I love Nier Automata so much. Is uh, uh, this is sort of like a spoiler uh, if you haven't played it. It sort of sort of is, but it's not a story spoiler. But when you beat the game, the game gives you a message where it tells you, you know, thank you for purchasing the game and thank you for playing through it. Here's more of the story. And when you beat the game, you unlock the other parts of the game. And I think that's one of the reasons why I love that game so much is that it felt like when you beat it, you earned, you know, the other part instead of just paying for it. Uh, I, I, I grew up in that day and age, so that's probably why I love that game so much. But, um, I think that PS4 is probably my last gen. I'm more focused on picking up older titles that I'm going to be playing in the future. So uh, PS1 games, I, I, I'm almost done picking up all the games that I want. Uh, there's like five or four more titles that I need on my list. I'm probably gonna pick up more Wii U titles. Uh, and I got one more Wii title that I need to get that I, I'm interested in playing as well. And I'm gonna finish every game on my shelf instead of just buying more. I did recently buy uh, something and where is it? I think it's it's up here, but you can't, oh yeah. I recently, I recently bought Mega Man 11. Um, I'm gonna play through this when I get a chance. This is, it's, it's, I just got it actually. So, oh crap. It was supposed to land on top of the games, not fall behind it. But anyway, <laughs> but anyway guys, I don't wanna make this video too long. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope you guys also understand, you know, what I'm going through when it comes to like the gaming market and stuff like that. Um, because, um, I don't know, as, as games as a medium, you know, we all love games and we love to play it and it it we we all have a limited amount of money that we can spend but it almost feels like it's getting to that point where eventually you're going to have to uh <laughs> you're gonna be shelling out a lot of money you're gonna have to pick a certain game you want to play because it feels like eventually all the games are going to turn into a service if they haven't turned into it yet eventually you're going to be paying for it monthly uh, hopefully it doesn't happen because that's that's a lot <laughs> but anyway that's that's a topic for another video so anyway guys i hope you guys enjoyed this video and um i'll see you guys next time all right guys peace <laughs>